It is leading with the helmet. I'm Danny. He's good. Follow me on Twitter at Danny Mata Jr. You can follow him on Twitter at Fire and Miss. Thank you so much for making us uh, part of your morning as we get set for another great Sunday in the NFL. Uh, and to this, in today's episode, we'll talk about um, a lot of things, including the Raiders' just epic tank job uh, to a degree that I never thought I'd see before. On the other side, we get to see one of the rare instances of just pure greatness, Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady going head-to-head. But we begin today with not football. The Dodgers are not the World Series champions. They lose in five games to the Red Sox on their home field, second straight year. And uh, I personally think it really sucks. And uh, having, you know, I'm only I'm only 31. And, uh, you know, in goods here, just you turn 32 here. We have never seen the Dodgers win the World Series in our lifetime. So every time I hear you know, about Cubs fans and all that shit. I've never really cared much because they, you know, if they're our age, they have no idea what suffering is. You and I get it. Uh, but you and I had a pretty big disagreement about just how good the Dodgers have been the last couple of years. I feel like it sucks to be a Dodgers fan. You don't. Yeah, I mean, do I want them to win? Of course. I mean, that that goes without saying. You always want your team to win, but I think, as you put it, you said you'd rather have one World Series and be garbage for 10 years, but have that one win, and I like every year having something to root for every single October, and then it's not that they can't win, it's just they haven't, so having something to root for every October, and it's just a matter of time, I prefer to have that than just one and done. I wouldn't want to be a Marlins fan, put it that way. Well, no, look, I wouldn't want to be a Marlins fan either. And I'm not saying that I would want, you know, I want the Dodgers to be crap forever. What I said was that, like, I would, like, for all these great years they've had, I'd trade them for, for a championship. And I would because they've got, gotten so close. Like, you know, I, 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 I feel like the, the number of times that they have ripped our guts out, you know, and I thought they had it against the Astros last year. And they should have. And Clayton Kershaw let him down. And then he came out and was a dud twice in the World Series this year. Twice. Both games he was a dud. And uh, it's it's really, man, just it's, it's, it's no fun. And I believe that, like, for example, Astros fans, like, last two years, would you rather be the Astros, who have won World Series championship but did not go this year, they were knocked out earlier, or would you rather be a Dodgers fan? To me... Which resume I'd rather have? I'd rather have the Astros because they won something. And yeah, they no also went to the ALCS. That's right, right. No, but what I'm saying is, I would prefer to. I would have preferred a World Series last year and not to have gone back to the World Series this year versus going back to back years and losing both times. Like I, it, to me, it, it, being the being the second best team, like okay, great. You don't get trophies for being the second best team. You know. Like, I mean, everyone, you, you and I watched that Patriots team in 2007, and it's easy to be objective and know they were the best team in football. But that doesn't mean anything to the fans who had to watch the Giants rip their guts out. You know, like that. And, and you know, and for me, it, it doesn't mean anything that the Dodgers got to the World Series. Why they didn't win it both times. And it just. It doesn't mean anything. It's, but what I'm saying, dude, what I'm saying is I've, I've always wanted to see them win the World Series. They've never done it. All they have done is gotten close and ripped my guts out every time. And they weren't as close this year as they were a year ago. You know, and, and you remember we had conversations. It was hard for me to get up for the Dodgers this year the way it was last year because I kept looking at this team and thinking, like, there ain't no way they beat the Red Sox or the Astros. No, and sure enough. They weren't getting anywhere since the start. And they made it back to the series with – I think it was less of a team, but uh, they still got a future. They got a lot of young kids. They had their all-star shortstop go injured for the season. They got potential to do what they're doing and do it more. Got, it's an interesting off season. I don't know what's going. Like what I do know is signing Kershaw back for thirty-one million a year. I feel like he's earning like twenty million of that because that's a good regular season pitcher. But that last eleven, uh, that's supposed to get you playoff starts. So. Right, and and he's not. I mean, he had he pitched well in what one game during the whole postseason. Now, granted, it was I mean it was a huge game. I mean, they couldn't have 
I mean, he helped get them to the World Series, and that's to his credit. But once they were there, he was a dud twice. And at, at some point, you've got to be better than that. And when they won that 18 inning marathon, the Red Sox had used all their pitchers. I started thinking maybe, 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 maybe. And when it was 4 nothing, I really felt like, okay, there might be something here. And then just crushed five runs in the ninth inning and just – my hopes were, and then and then Kike Hernandez gets a hit <laughs> with their town nine to four. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, there there's a lot of things that the Dodgers could have done differently, but um, there, there's also, I mean, how much disrespect is it to just say the Dodgers were bad and not that the Astros and Red Sox were good? Those are two amazing teams that they lost to. Look, I know, I understand that, but what I am saying though is that the Dodgers have ripped my guts out and. You know, I mean, again, dude, they the Dodgers had their ace pitcher, game five of the World Series, tied it two against the Astros, and he fell apart. And before that, Kenley Jansen blew it. Like Kenley Jansen is just not the guy in the World Series. The last couple of years, no. he's just not been <laughs> he's that guy. Not. He just he hasn't been that guy. And it's 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 just crazy to me. And 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 the start that they blew by, by, to, by that Rich Hill gave them, you know, it, it, but again, like. Rich Hill, he got pulled early, gave him two good starts in the World Series, which is more than what you can say for Clayton Kershaw. No, and then he did one start in the series. Well, one start this year, two starts last year. So he's given them three good World Series starts, which is three times the number of good World Series starts that Clayton Kershaw has given them. Like, that's infuriating. Like It's infuriating as a Dodgers fan to realize that. I'm not going to you know, argue that. I'm, Kershaw's no, he can't do playoffs. He's not right. redeemable anymore. No, he's not. Like, you know, there was a lot of excuses before, but they've all been, times have come and gone. He's had some big moments in the playoffs, and he's, he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, and, they're gonna, and he's going to be remembered as one of the best Dodger pitchers of, of all time. But, you know, but again, like, if you don't do it in the playoffs, you don't do it in the World Series. You know, he's got to be one of the reasons why they win the World Series, and he's really been one of the biggest reasons why they've lost it the last two years, and that's really aggravating. I think he gets his opening day start again this year, and then after this year, I think Bueller becomes their new ace. Yeah, I hope you're right about that. I, just, I hope they win something, man. I really hope they win something. This has been... Really, uh, this has been really frustrating to watch as a fan. I'm just tired of them ripping my guts out. Like for, for, for millennials, you know, I just tell people like you and I, we know what it was, what it was like for long suffering Cubs fans, at least to this point in our lives. Right. Like we have never seen the Dodgers win a world series. No. So whenever I see here, you know, the, you know, whenever I, I see these people, like, like even last year, like, these Astros fans, oh, long suffering Astros fans, like, dude, I've never even seen my team get to the World Series. You guys got that in 05. Like, people, people, because it's the Dodgers, and particularly because it's the city of Los Angeles, they don't, un, they don't have any sympathy for the fans. And I get it, whatever. But it's been a sucky three decades. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> and you're right, it could have been worse, but it's been sucky. Yeah, I feel like that's been beaten to hell. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, you want to talk about getting beaten to hell? Ladies, okay, so on Twitter, if you guys follow us on Twitter, so Thursday night, Goods and I will pick our games. And he picked the 49ers just because whatever. And I picked the Raiders just because whatever. And I didn't even know that Nick Mullins was going to start. I didn't even know who that guy – I'm not even sure if his name actually is Nick Mullins. I think it's Nick Mullins. I'm not even going to go look it up. But – I was like, okay, well, if I had known that a third-string quarterback was going to make a, a sudden start at the last minute, I was like, okay, uh, with no, right on, on a short week, I'm thinking, okay, the Raiders are going to kill him, and I'd have been wrong because <laughs> not only did the Raiders not win, they got killed, and not only uh, did they get killed, but it looks like they have all quit on John Gruden. Yeah, and it, they, ugly. it looks like they it looks like they've quit on Derek Carr too. Yeah, the offensive line. I mean, he got smashed so much that game. They got no running back. Ever that team? No, they. they 
Yeah, that is they, honestly, man. That's the worst team in football right now. They might be worse than the Bills because at least the Bills, you know, we have seen that, that the Bills have, have a pretty decent defense. It's just their offense and their quarterback situation is just so atrocious. It, a lot of bad things are happening, but the Raiders don't have anything to hang their hat on. Like nothing. They not even their special teams. Daniel Carlson is their kicker. It's like they picked up the Vikings reject so they could make sure they tanked. <laughs> like they were like, "Oh, how are we gonna make sure we get the first pick?" Well, we're gonna we're gonna get all three phases of the game. Go get me Daniel Carlson. And then they released their uh, their best pass rusher today. <laughs> right, right. Bruce Irvin's gone. Which of course, okay, why why not? You know, I, I was surprised. they should have traded him. Might as well have traded yeah. him for a. Something. I mean, you're trading everyone else. It's cra- It's crazy to me, like, um, what's happening over there. And I feel like the, the locker room probably – I think Gruden was on the verge of losing the locker room before the season started. I think the moment he traded Khalil Mack, that sent a message to the rest of the team that they didn't want. And they didn't, weren't ready to receive at the time. And I think that it's just been a downward spiral since then. All they can hope for now is that the three number ones really turn that club around in a hurry. But that's the thing, though. Like they, like, I, like they drafted Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper and all these other guys, and they're gonna go and turn it. Like, what are they? The Marlins? <laughs> the Marlins? That's what the Marlins do. They go out and they I and think they. The Clippers is a better example. <laughs> the Clippers is another one. But I think, but look, but like the Marlins, though, in 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 baseball, been doing this ever since they won the last World Series. They go and they 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 trade all their young talent for more young talent, and they develop that young talent. And then they trade it for more young talent, who they then turn around and trade again, and the cycle never ends. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. They traded a bunch of young players in their prime. You would think that you wanted to build on the team that went 12-4 and four and got to the playoffs. And instead, they blew it up two years after the fact. That's insane to me. And John Gruden's got nine more years on his contract and, like, <laughs> at least $90 million or whatever it is. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. I don't know. It's getting harder <laughs> and harder to defend. I, I, I can't. I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> uh, it's insane. But and then, Okay, so I, I, I'm done talking about how crappy the Raiders. Well, first, actually, I have one more question. Do you think the Raiders win again this year? Yeah, I'm sure they'll come out with another win somehow. I don't think they do. I I, I can't figure out how this team's going to win again. It's it always I'll, happens. I mean, it's very rare teams go one and fifteen or zero sixteen, anything like that. It's somebody always some finds a way to lose to these teams. Look, unless they're playing the Vikings in Minnesota, I don't see another win. But they only have a quarterback, <laughs> and then the Vikings like to go after quarterbacks. Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying it. The the Vikings at home. They're a mess. We're going to talk about that, Vikings fan. we got to talk about that. What the hell is wrong with your team on their home field? Pressure to perform, I guess. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it, to me, this is, it's, an absolute, it's, it's an absolute mess. Yeah, uh, I, they could have beaten the Saints. They really could have, but terrible turnovers. Missed opportunity. Dan Bailey, he's clearly not the same. Not yet. When I say yet, with very a lot of hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just, I really, to me, I, I've, I've never seen a team that was uh, so bad on their home field. Oh, wait, yes, I have. The, the Cowboys. That's pretty much what I've watched the Cowboys do ever since Jerry World, uh, you know, was built. They, they can't win at home and they can only win on the road. And then this year it's completely backwards. For some reason this year the Cowboys are really good at home and horrendous on the road. Um, yeah, you're Vikings, dude. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I cannot figure out what the hell is going on there. And the only thing that I have, the only conclusion I can come to is the Vikings are just not as good as, as I thought they were going to be. And maybe they'll get there, but they're not there right now. And you know, you, know, you know, Mike Freeman wrote a really good article. I, I mentioned him in the show before. Mike Freeman is a great follow on Twitter, uh, by the way. He made a really good point about how just, you know, the Vikings paid Kirk Cousins all this money, and he, they're basically, he, they just turned back, they turned to the Redskins. His numbers look great. His numbers look great. But, yeah, where's, what's, the, where's the record? They're okay. They're just kind of hanging around there. They're, they're okay. They're not great. 
they're just kind of there. That's it's, it, it's really what they they turned into Washington, dude. Like, and I don't I don't know what's going on here. But for for eighty four million dollars, he was brought to Minnesota to beat Aaron Rodgers. They tied with them and should have lost, but a ridiculous pass rushing penalty or hit, roughing the quarterback penalty bailed Cousins out of a loss to the Packers, and then they lost. Got whooped at home by the Saints. I'm telling you, man, like this is a problem for $84 million. He's supposed to win these games. The only thing I can say is he's getting a lot of passes deflected. Other than that, I can't put any blame on him. And there's been a lot of um, injuries this year. I've had to deal with a ton of them. Their best pass rusher, the running back. Now they're going to miss a receiver, the cornerback. Different cornerback, safety. I mean, they've had injuries riddled throughout the season. The offensive yeah. line. I know a lot of teams go through it, but they have too, which is why they haven't played to the caliber everyone's expecting. But I think if they all get healthy, then they are that team. Yeah, I'm. I, you know, I'll tell you one thing. The best thing they have going for them is that no, nobody in the North is winning. It, it is uh, is running away with it. Uh, I would tell you, I, I if I'm a Packers fan. If, if not for having to face Tom Brady on Sunday Night Football, I'd be pretty. I feel pretty encouraged about what I saw against against the Rams. Yeah, you, know, you know they played pretty well defensively in that game, and they, they had a chance to win it. Um, but you know, I mean, just the Rams are just unreal. It, it's crazy how good they are. And but, but I'll tell you what: if the Packers can get that kind of a defensive effort, they can be pretty good. And, and I think that you're you're going to start seeing them just get progressively better as the season goes on. You know, I think. And, um, you know, right now, right now, I, I feel like the Packers might end up being the best team in the division. I think the Bears are fool's gold. I think that I still think they're a year away. They kind of come back down to earth. And uh, I, I'm not really sure what to think about your Vikings, man, except that I don't know how good they are. But, you know, they look pretty pedestrian and so do the Packers. And I guess the best thing is no one's running away with this division. But they don't look like a team that to me is going to beat the Saints or the Rams. Yeah, I think a lot of those average teams are going to play better. Now, who end up coming out on top, I couldn't tell you, but I think a lot of those average playing teams are going to get better as the season goes on. It's only the halfway point. I think the Vikings get better, Packers get better, Saints have already been better, mm -hmm. and then Rams are doing their thing. Um, yeah, I agree with the Bears, Lions are just, the <laughs> they're going to they're gonna right. keep falling. This is one of those years where, like, I, you know, it's also... It may, be, it may be that one of these teams that you know is underperforming. I mean, the, 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 we've seen it before. You get a team underperforms, they get hot at the end of the year, and they race into the playoffs, and next thing you know, boom, they're in the Super Bowl. We've seen hot teams do that, and maybe it, the Vikings ought to be one of those teams because right now they are not that team that we were expecting to see. You know, they, they, we, we, we thought they were going to be better than what we've seen from them, and that right now they're not that. Um, yeah. But... Uh, I will tell you though, you know, we, we, we keep talking about, you know, the Rams and and uh, you know, they're getting ready to face off against the Saints and I, I think that, that looks like a really good matchup because the Saints, as you mentioned, are playing much better defensively and they've got an offense who can keep up with the Rams. <laughs> uh, we have got a couple of really good you know, games on the on the slate here in the afternoon. It's, you know, we, with you know, between uh, you know, Rams and Saints and and you know, Packers and Patriots, obviously the Sunday night game. But what are your thoughts on on the Saints and their chances for what they're going to see with the Rams? I think that's going to be a really tough game, and I would definitely take the over. <laughs> Whatever that game is. <laughs> I yeah. don't care how much. If it's sixty, I'll take the over on sixty. I don't care. But um, it, it's going to be a hard fought game. Two quarterbacks who want it bad. Gurley is a monster. No one can stop him this year. He, that guy, he's probably going to rush for 100, receive for, you know, 60, two touchdown kind of thing. No one can stop him. Kamara's finally picking it up, helping out Breeze. It could be annoying because I got Breeze on fantasy. So the Saints will score 40 points and then he'll have like 200 yards and one touchdown. I'm like, come on, man. So yeah, the rest of that team's all. picking him up. Yeah, I'm surprised you brought up fantasy. I was thinking about going easy on you and not mentioning the epic ass kicking I delivered to you. It's wonderful. So what place are you in now? Uh, don't worry about that. So what place am I in still? You know what? Oh, if okay. memory okay. serves, we have the exact same record. If memory serves. 
I, don't I think know. you're five and three, and I think I'm five and three. And yeah, you scored more points, but I have a very different team than I did at the start of the year. So we have the same record, and I'm only 37 points behind you on the year. And my team's way better today than it was at the start of the year. So we'll see what happens. That's all you can do to see what happens. But a yeah. single week means nothing. Well, till the playoffs. Well, yeah, well, uh, I beat the hell out of you, and I feel pretty good about that. I was, I was very happy with the ass kicking I delivered to you. It was, it was wonderful. It was, it was absolutely marvelous. Um, so, uh, w- w- before we get into a topic, w- w- the thing I wanted to talk about the most, is, we're going to talk to you. A little, we're going to do a little bit on the Buccaneers. Uh, they're getting killed by the Bengals. They go to Fitzpatrick because it looks like the game is out of reach, and uh, Fitz magic happens. Dude goes crazy. They tie the game and have a chance to win, but the, the Bengals got the ball last, won the game. I, I'm, I'm curious about, you know, this whole thing with the Bucks. Jameis Winston hasn't really done much for him on the field. He's embarrassed them off of it. For you, Ryan Fitzpatrick starting Sunday, for you, does that mean – that's it. Jameis Winston's done. It could be. I mean, I think the Bucks are almost phoning it in at this point. Because they go with Winston, they lose. If they go with Fitzpatrick, he's only good when teams aren't expecting him. If if some team preps for him, he's going to be bad. And then so you're in a losing situation no matter what. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, Fitzpatrick is... Yeah, kind of like what you said. I mean, we know what he is. He's 35 years old. He has games where he, he's had games where he's gone just completely insane. We've seen him, you know, throw six touchdowns in a game before. And he does that. He's also thrown six interceptions in a game. And he is pretty much unpredictable from one day to the next. But if you're Jameis Winston, they would drafted him number one overall. He's never been to the playoffs. They've surrounded him with weapons. He gets a sexual assault charge against him in the offseason he got suspended for three games he had a another rape allegation when he was in college i I mean at this point if this isn't the end for tampa bay i don't know what is yeah they have to just start over at this point and winston will never see another contract i'm not a lucrative one anyway i don't know there's always a guy that feels like they can get the best out of the guy and the thing about Jameis is I, I when, when he was in the draft I, I I remember saying that you know I said on national radio I said this that I wouldn't touch him at all I would go after Mariota and my number one point was everyone loves Jameis Winston for the X's and O's everyone remembers that video where he was in there with Steve Mariucci and he could name every defense and every read faster you know he was seeing things that even football coaches weren't seeing so clearly his IQ for football is off the charts but the problem is that it's not just about the IQ on the field. It's about the IQ off of it. And the, the, the poor decision-making you know, is something we see off the field, and we're seeing it with some of the throws he makes on it. You know, he just makes bad decisions. And people who make bad decisions, apparently this is a guy that is affected by bad decisions in every aspect of his life. I don't know how that gets corrected. So I'm kind of – I do think someone will give him a chance, but I'm with you. I, I don't I, – I, I can't. I can't trust the guy is my thing. I just can't trust the guy. No. Two guys I can trust. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Sunday night football. This is the this is greatness uh, personified in two individuals. Um, Aaron Rodgers spent, you know, made it a point earlier this week to talk about how great Tom Brady was. He's the best quarterback ever. Five Super Bowl rings. And that's the end of the discussion. And Tom Brady turned around and said, dude, you guys don't realize how good Aaron Rodgers is. If he, if we traded places and he was in this odd offense, he'd throw for 7,000 yards a year. You guys have no <laughs> idea how good he is. You know, and, and they laughed at Tom Brady, like, just like you're laughing, right? But like Tom Brady, like, he was very serious. He's just like, you guys don't realize how good this dude is. Like, you know, uh, I, for me, w- as you know, we've had the discussion, best quarterbacks ever. For me, it's number one, Brady, number three, Rodgers. I cannot wait for this matchup. Just as a football fan, how excited are you for that game? Uh, well, I'm excited as long as the Patriots win. But I, I do <laughs> want to see a good matchup. I mean, right. it, it'll be fun to see greatness go at it like that. I mean, it always is and anything you watch. That's why everyone loves opening day of baseball. You see aces go at it. 
Right. And then, so this will be that, basically. <laughs> the aces of football, not even just the aces of their team. Right. And there were, and there were certain matchups that in any sport that would catch people's attention and whether they were big fans of the sport or not, you know, you know, when, when Kobe was around LeBron and Kobe would go at it, people tuned in and watch, you know, now it's probably more LeBron and Durant guys like that. But, you know, I remember when, when the, the Patriots played the saints a few years back, I, I, I just marveled at that game and, and the finish and, and breeze and Brady didn't really play well in that game, but they both had, made key plays late in games that got had gave him a chance to win brady just happened to have the ball last um and i feel like this is going to be one of those games because <laughs> i and i i feel like aaron Rodgers is going to be particularly motivated for this right you know they're both northern california guys brady's supposed to be the best quarterback ever Rodgers can go to his field to go to tom brady's field and put on a show i i i and i, I feel like both quarterbacks are going to be you know, riled up for this, and and I I can't wait because there's something about just seeing greatness in all of its forms go head to head. That's you know we're not we may not ever see this matchup again. We don't know how much longer Brady's going to play. There's no guarantee he'll ever play in the Super Bowl. This might be the last time we get to see something like this. Yeah, I think ultimately this game is going to come down to which coach has their team better prepared, and that is generally Bill Belichick versus anybody. Yeah, and, and kind of like you know, kind of like how we talked about like a little bit like you know, and, and re- like if you, if you we watched the Monday night game and, and the Bills played a lot better than a lot of people expected, I think, and, and defensively they showed they can kind of hang around, and 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 that happens sometimes. And I feel like the Packers kept hearing about all the questions about how they were going to play against the Rams offense, and the Packers played very well. And I think you're going to see something like that here too. I think both of these defenses are going to be are going to be th- hearing about how great each quarterback is, and it's going to get them jacked up. Uh, you know, And I think they're going to play well. But ultimately, this game's probably going to be close in the fourth quarter. And if it is, I think each quarterback's going to do something uh, that you think has probably won them the game, and then the other one's going to go and win it right back. That's, what, <laughs> that's kind of what I'm expecting. Yeah, certainly easily within the realm of possibility. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> should just be good. And Sunday night needs a good game. Yeah, we yeah we 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 had a few uh, we had a few uh, duds in there. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were uh, pretty disappointed in the in the Sunday night contest from from a week ago. But uh, I, you know, this is definitely one of the better ones. And you know, Green Bay and and New England, and we're, at, and we're only a couple of weeks away now from. Rams and Chiefs, which maybe already will be a Super Bowl preview, the way those teams are playing. So we're, we're kind of getting into some really marquee stuff. And um, so I guess I, I ask you this, and I'm going to ask you to take off your purple goggles. When I say Aaron Rodgers to you, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Is it a moment, or is it just a, a play style, or is there a particular moment that stands out to you? You've asked me this question a lot, and I've never had a problem saying I think Aaron Rodgers is the most talented quarterback in football. I think Brady's the best, but Rodgers is the most talented. I could, yeah, I probably agree with that, yeah. Because if, if he's not the MVP of that team, then I don't know what the definition of it is. I mean, he's the only reason that people consider them contenders every single season. It's, it's it. Yeah. It's him. Right, and I, I feel like, yeah the same way on that too. Like I, you know, tell people we, we talked about this on the show. He has a play, Aaron Rodgers has a playoff loss with six touchdown passes. He was denied a second Super Bowl trip because a guy couldn't recover an onside kick. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 crazy to me that you know he only has one ring and, and some of the crazy things that have happened to him in the playoffs. But um, he he's just a hell of a lot of fun to watch and uh, you know. For me, I think the best thing, the best memory I ever have of him is probably is just that Super Bowl against Pittsburgh and the way that he just threw receivers open. I've never seen a quarterback with throw the football like that. And you know, for Tom Brady, it's probably every single time ever, like whenever it's inside of two minutes, when you see that dude walk on the field, Tom Brady with his shoulders back, he just looks around. Doesn't matter. He could have been beaten up the whole game, but if the game's on the line, he will walk out there. You see his shoulders back, and you're just like, "Oh, that guy's about to do something." 
because <laughs> he has done it so many times. What's your biggest Brady memory? Uh, Brady memory? I mean, it, it was fun to see him throw for 50 touchdowns when they had Moss. That was cool to see. Because he'd been a very pedestrian statistically, but always winning. And then right. Manning, everyone's like, oh, Manning's the greatest because of his stats. And then Brady got Manning, or, uh, Moss. And then all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, that's what he does with a receiver. <laughs> right. It's, it's funny what happens when a guy's not throwing to Dion Branch and Troy Brown, right? When he suddenly starts throwing to Welker and, and Moss. And he's got the weapons that Manning has, and oh yeah, that was that was something. I agree with you. That was that was one of the craziest things. Um, you know, even even when they lost the, the two Super Bowls, they lost. Like you know, he made plays that should have won in that game, you know, those games. And um, which, from my money, he's, he's he's the most clutch player I, I, I think I've ever seen. Um, I really can't wait as an as a as a as, as just as a football fan, I can't wait. And this is one of those games that. I'm giddy about, even though I don't root for either team. I'm giddy just to watch the greatness. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm 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 feeling pretty good. Um, all right. Well, you know we've, we've covered a lot here. Um, do you want to do game picks? Yeah. How'd you do last week? Well, you and I split two games, if memory serves, right? I have no idea. I just oh, know you how I did. See. <laughs> okay. Well, you and I—I I think you and I disagreed on two games. Uh, we disagreed, I think, on Carolina last week, and then we—and I, I got that one right, and then we disagreed on another one that you got right. And I think, oh, Seattle and Detroit. You took you took Seattle, and I took Detroit because I'm stupid. <laughs> well, that team—you never know who's going to show up. It's weird. Right, and I'll tell you one thing. Like, right, we're gonna to get to this in a minute, but yeah. Okay, so let's just let's just go ahead and do game fix. So I am zero and one this week because I took the Raiders, which I can guarantee I will never take the Raiders again this season. That's a, that's to a certainty. Uh, you want to know who's not the Raiders? All right. So if you guys want to follow along, NFL dot com slash schedules. So just going down the list. Uh, bears at the Bills. So you don't want to talk about how we went twelve and two last week? I feel like that's pretty impressive. Well, then we both went twelve and two last week. We had to. And I understand because... that. That's what I'm saying. You want to talk about? That's like that's a hell of a, a week. Yeah, but you know, I mean, we both did a good job. Yeah, yay for us. But I will say this. I, I will say this. What I do, what I will talk about. We got to put this on pause. I haven't done it yet. Nate Peterman, my favorite quarterback. The only quarterback whose jersey I may buy at some point, Nate Peterman, <laughs> is going to play against the Chicago Bears. Nate Peterman, who has appeared, not even played all of, but appeared in 10 quarters and thrown nine interceptions. That guy gets to play the Bears. Well, Mac is questionable, so. That could yeah, I don't. Him think that matters <laughs> i'm saying it'll help <laughs> it'll definitely help but nate peterman will balance it back the other way <laughs> I, I i i i truly i honestly i can't wait i'm thrilled to have the bears defense in one of my fantasy leagues <laughs> i'm thrilled about that um so i guess the question for for us now is will they even cover so let me find out if the what the spread is on that game and you could tell me if you think the bills will manage to even cover it. So where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, okay. Chicago is a 10-point road favorite. Yeah, I think they'll do that. I mean, Trubisky's showing he can put up some points, do well. Bill's got a solid defense, but I still think they can cover that. Yeah, I feel like I could see the Bills playing real well defensively, like you said, but still be like a 20 to nothing. 20 to 3. If the, if the Bills score, it's gonna, it has to be off of their defense doing something. I refuse to believe that Nate Peterman can do anything positive against the Bears' defense. <laughs> well, not for the Bill. He'll probably do plenty of positive things for the Bears. <laughs> so uh, I, 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 I think this is, that's going to get ugly real fast. All right. So you and I are in agreement on that. We think they'll cover. All right. Buccaneers fits magic at the Panthers. No. Panthers are going to show them what's up. 
Yeah, I feel like that's a gimme. Chiefs at the Browns. I feel like that's a gimme too. Oh no, I thought long and hard about this one. I tell you, you did. Oh yeah, yeah you. Know, so I got to ask you a question about this. So the Browns two five and one. Here's eight. what did you make of that Hugh Jackson firing? I didn't understand. <laughs> I was like, why wait till now? It's, that was exactly my thought. I kept thinking, so you didn't fire him when you were 0-16. You're playing better this season, showing signs of moving in the right direction, and now you've had enough? Yeah, I didn't get it. Because, I mean, they are 2-5, and five, which is a bad record, but those five, and obviously the one, were very close games. And a lot right. of it is just missed field goals. They could right, have beaten were... the Saints in Week 2 very easily. Right. They could have beaten they the should... Steelers. Missed right. field goal. Uh, right. They'd be, they'd be sitting there 4-4 four and four if they win just those two games. And, you know, they, a, a tough loss to the Raiders they had, you know? So, I don't understand that at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I, mean, I really don't. I mean, if, if, you, if you're going to fire Hugh Jackson, you fire him after 0-16, and, and you, you start fresh. You don't. I, why you fire the guy when your team – is playing better than it did last year and showing clear signs of improvement. Look, I'm not saying Hugh Jackson was the guy there. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is I don't, like what you're saying, right? I don't get the timing. I don't understand why you would fire him now. And what was with the Carlos Hyde trade? Yeah, even that. Like, I mean, I mean, from, from the Jaguars' perspective, they weren't sure about Fournette, and I get it, but they hardly even used him. Uh, I really, I think they were just trying, the uh, Browns were just trying to make make room for Nick Chubb, which I think was a good idea because Nick Chubb, I think, is a very good football player. Um, I, I don't know what the hell the Browns are thinking with the upper man. I mean, th- their owner is just a nut. And if, he grew up a Steelers fan, and now he's a, Bra- a Browns owner. And every time they've lo- – he's fired all these coaches after they lose to the Steelers. I don't know if you saw that. He's fired, I think, three coaches after losses to the Steelers. He just does not like losing to the Steelers. <laughs> he really <laughs> hates that. Oh, so. Man. Yeah, it's it's yeah. He he's got a problem there. I, I really don't understand the, the the makeup of that. I really don't. Uh, okay, so here's a game that I, I'm surprised we're even picking because honestly, does anybody care about the Jets and Dolphins? Like legitimately, does anybody give a shit? Yeah, I had a hard time trying to figure this one out. I, it's it basically is coin toss. I but I did go with the Dolphins. I don't. Yeah, I, I went with <laughs> I went I went with the Jets and uh, and I guess if you ask, if you ask me in five minutes I'll take the Dolphins. I I don't even care I don't care about these two teams. They're two of the most uninteresting teams in all of football. And when I, I care so little about them that trying to break down the matchup just makes me bored. And I'm like I'd rather take a loss for being for not looking at this <laughs> matchup than to give any time to care about it. <laughs> just ridiculous. I don't know why. I can't believe people root for those teams. All right. Um, the Steelers at the Ravens. This is one of the best games of the day. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I mean, the Steelers are turning it around, but the Ravens are very solid. I think they're kind of overlooked in the AFC, and they're going to be tough at home. I believe they'll beat the Steelers. I actually agree with that. Uh, I will tell you that the Steelers have surprised me. They, you know, they're they're much better than I thought. I I, I thought Cincinnati was going to win that division. I don't, I don't think much of Pittsburgh, but they already beat the Bengals and they're just playing better. I don't understand it. I um, I, I I just didn't think they were going to be that good this year, but they proved me wrong. But I do think the Ravens win uh, on Sunday. I, I uh, especially because Pittsburgh is still not a good road team. Uh, to a team that's not good on the road, to a team that isn't good at home, the Vikings at home to the Lions. I'm hoping the bad Lions show up. Uh, but they always play the Vikings tough anyway. But man, the Vikings really need this win. This is division now. They better step up. Even though Diggs is apparently hurt. So they're going to be missing him, but hopefully Griffin plays better than last week. So... Uh, but they got to beat the Lions. The Vikings got to win it. I um, I almost picked the Lions. To be completely honest, I really almost picked the Lions. I, I, I thought, thinking about, I just thought about the possibility of them ping ponging back and being on their upswing because it seems like every other week they're decent. They can their upswing coupled with the Vikings at being at home, but also I just can't trust the Lions. 
And if I'm if I'm gonna flip a coin, I, I would just I would just rather trust the team I think is better, and I, I think the Vikings will find a way. I don't know how pretty it'll be, but I think they'll find a way. Um, here's a here's an, a, an important game for Atlanta. This is maybe their season, but Atlanta's at Washington, and you know, great offense, defense has gone to hell. This this is a huge game for their season. How do you feel about it? Uh, I wanted to believe in the Falcons so much this year, and they just got decimated by injuries and the Redskins are looking better than I thought they were going to so Redskins will do it they're very good defensively um but the thing is like Alex Smith is giving them almost nothing they're running the ball very well with Adrian Peterson um I I I don't I feel as bad as the Falcons are I just don't feel like Washington's the team that's going to exploit how bad they are defensively. I think they're a desperate team with talent, and I and you know hey, look the Falcons, the Falcons have had a little bit of time here. I mean they 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 had a bye week in there. Um, I'm going to take Atlanta. Uh, I'm going to give Atlanta. Uh, initially, I thought Washington, but I'm going to say Atlanta. All right. All right. So okay, Atlanta. Okay, so. All right, where I lost my place. Oh, here we go. Texans, Texan, Texans at the Broncos. I'm taking the Texans till they lose. This team just they're rolling <laughs> really, really hard. Like everyone yeah, counted them out, and they're like, "Nope, we're done with that shit." <laughs> I I started counting them out, and the thing is, like they they had not even really played well until the last two games, and so they're on an upswing. Uh, I think it sucks that they lost Will Fuller for the year to a torn ACL. They turn around and trade for Demarius Thomas, which is weird for him because the Broncos trade him and he has to go play the Broncos the same <laughs> week that they trade him. Which is, I, by the way, because I, 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 I interviewed Demarius Thomas a couple times when, when, he, when, he, when he flew in. Uh, we got him at the airport and we got him the next day at Texans, camp, uh, Texans practice. And I got to tell you, that guy is awesome. Demarius Thomas is a legit dude. Um, he's really cool. Uh, I wish him the best. And, um, I think the Texans win also. Um, we got a couple of we got uh, three really good games coming up here in the afternoon slate. Uh, really interesting one: the Chargers at the Seahawks. This one, I, I don't know. It depends. Seahawks are are looking a lot better, and they're at home. But the Chargers, I feel they're a legitimate AFC team. The Seahawks. Uh, they haven't proved it against anything substantial. So I, I think the Chargers will take it, even though they're in Seattle. Um, I, I keep wondering if Joey Bosa is going to make his debut, which I think would make the Chargers defense really, really strong. I'm just not sure about it. But every time I think about it, you know, the Seahawks are better this year than you and I thought they would be. Uh, I don't think a lot of people thought they would be, except that, you know, it's a whole thing, right? You have Russell Wilson. If you have a quarterback like that, you're going to be in a lot of games. They've run the ball well, and they're still really good at home. Um, I'm going to take the Seahawks. I, I, I think on their home field that they can do this. Um, so I'll take Seattle. Um, now we get into the real good ones. Uh, Rams at the Saints. Yeah, this one, uh, <laughs> you can't. Pick either team and feel bad about it. You really can't. Uh, but I can't not choose the Rams. I mean, you know what's funny about this game? I actually have Breeze and Gurley on my fantasy team, so I hope this game is like fifty-six to sixty or something crazy. <laughs> yeah, I yeah I I, I get yeah. Um, Although I have the Rams defense too, so that would kind of go bad. Yeah, you might want to th- rethink that, <laughs> that strategy. Yeah, you might want to find another defense to play because that, that, this is going to get uh, really interesting. Um, I will tell you, I stared at this one for a really long time because I, I feel like I feel like the Saints defense is playing a lot better, and I feel like them being at home really has something. But ultimately, th- there's just I just don't see how they can stop the Rams. I, I just don't see it. Um, and I think the Rams are going to keep rolling. And until someone shows me that they can slow them down. And I know the Packers played pretty well last week. but uh, and, and if the Saints can maybe bring it something like, if I get, finally get pressure on the guy, I can see it. But I just, I, I've, I've got to think it's going to be the Rams. Yeah. 
I'll take the Rams. And I wanted, I, I thought about picking the Saints if you pick the Rams, thinking I can get a game there, but I'm thinking, nah, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got a couple differences, two or three already. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, how many do we have that are different? Seahawks, Redskins, Dolphins are different. Yeah, that Dolphins one even counts. <laughs> so we've got four so far. All right. So now we've got uh, Sunday night football. Green Bay at New England, Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady. When I feel like teams are very evenly matched, if something's got to just point me in a direction. Like for the Rams, it's just the fact that no one's been able to stop them. Or, and for this game, it's the fact that I trust Belichick to find a game plan to slow down Rodgers somewhat, at least enough to get Brady going. And so I'm going with the Patriots. Uh, I said before, I'll say it again. I think it's going to be close. I think both defenses are going to play well, though. You know, we've seen it a lot. They're, they're going to get hyped, and they're going to play better than we expect. Um, and I don't disagree with anything you just said. But the Packers really need this game. They, they really need this game. And I think, again, I kind of lean toward the team that's more desperate. And desperate team with talent here at Green Bay, um, especially after what I saw against the Rams. I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to take the Packers to beat the Patriots. Um, that's going to feel like a good game. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like you said earlier about like Rams and Saints, right? Like you pick, like if you're, I'm taking Aaron Rodgers, you're taking Tom Brady. I think both of us are like, okay. Yeah. I can't say you're wrong. I mean, <laughs> right, right, exactly. If, 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 you're gonna, if it's a toss up and you're telling me I get Aaron Rodgers, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like, I'll take my chances. Um, so I'll take the Packers there. All right, Monday Night Football. Uh, Cowboys, Amari Cooper's debut, hosting the Tennessee Titans. Well, greatest trade of the season. I think uh, <laughs> Cooper's going to get four touchdowns and beat the Titans. Well, you know, I hope you're right because he's on <laughs> one of my fantasy teams. Uh, honestly, man, my, my, my big thing on this is uh, the – just from a game matchups, it would be hard for me to buy the Titans anyway. The Titans' are, offensive line is terrible. They're going up against a very good pass rush in the Cowboys. And the Cowboys are at home. And they're that Jekyll and Hyde team. When they're in Dallas, they look really good. They look like a contender. When they're not in Dallas, they look terrible. <laughs> so this week they're in Dallas to the Cowboys. All right, how many games do we disagree on then? So we four, right? It was, uh, one, two, three, four. Five, if you include Thursday, right? And you're already up one zero on that one. So, wow, that's a lot this week. This is gonna be serious. Weird. This is a big one. So we got we have five games. So, uh, where are we at in the season standings? Both of my, you and I went twelve and two last week. Where are we at? I'm oh, at seventy six and forty three and two. Okay. All right. We we're both coming off our best week, twelve and two here. Oh, so I am at. Also, 76, 43, and 2. We have the same record. Halfway through the year. Yep. Tied up. So we we will not have the same record after this week as we have. But Well, I, that's not true. We could tie again. So we could split the two and get a tie. No, because I already got one up. Right, but what I'm saying is you have one up, but we could, we of the remaining four, one oh. of, you know, we were saying there could be a tie in there, right? What kind of return shit? How does that not count? It's part of the week. I understand that, dude. What I'm saying is there's five games, okay? You've gotten one of them, okay? So I'm saying that we could still finish the week two and two, two, two and one against each other, is what I'm saying. It's possible. We've already had two ties this season. I wouldn't bank on that. <laughs> I'm not banking on that. Well, maybe that Jets Dolphins game, man. What, zero to zero? I don't know. Man. Three to three? I, I really, here's the truth. I don't know enough about either one of those teams to really. I mean, honestly, they're the most uninteresting teams in the league. Like, like, like at least, like, at least the Raiders are an epic train wreck. <laughs> you know, like you can, you can, you can pay attention to the epic train wreck, but there's, there's nothing even interesting about the Jets, the Dolphins. Yeah, you I care don't about know the injuries. You, you care about you care, you care about Brock Osweiler or Sam Darnold. I forgot Osweiler was on the Jets. He's on the he's on the Dolphins actually. But honestly, I don't begrudge well, you, you a go. bit for not, I don't begrudge <laughs> you a bit. 
<laughs> Honestly, I don't begrudge you a bit for not knowing that. I didn't even know he he was on their roster until the, 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 they got ready to play the Texans because the week before he had that crazy game where he somehow beat the Bears. Because <sighs> you said yeah. Darnold, so I thought you were talking about the depth chart of the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Yeah. No, yeah. Brock Osweiler is a starting quarterback. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Was he at the yeah. whole season? Yeah, apparently he's been there. <laughs> I, dude, I, apparently the guy's alive. Like, I didn't even know he was alive. That's a thing. So there you go. Brock Osweiler. Here's your, 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 your daily dose of Brock Osweiler knowledge. <laughs> So, uh, oh, yeah. what movies have you seen recently? Anything? You know, I, I didn't really see anything else um, after the new Halloween. Um, I do, I'm really, really excited to see Overlord, uh, the new J.J. Abrams horror film that takes place in World War II. It's got zombies or monsters or something. It looks good. I'm watching that. Um, you know, I don't get, even care if it, it's good or not. What it, it does look like is entertaining as hell. It does look really entertaining. And that was the first thing I thought was, okay, you saw J.J. Abrams, I'm thinking, okay, all right, I'll get behind that. It's like Shoot 'em Up. Shoot 'em Up was not a good movie, but it was entertaining as hell. Dude, Shoot 'em Up was awesome. I told Janelle about that, my wife, and she was just like, okay, well, watch that. She loved it. Loved it. Just, I mean, just a good, have fun, and Overlord looks like that. That's so what I'm you. saying. I, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's, uh, it's just a silly plot and silly, just goofy probably bad dialogue but just fun madness it's like those expendable movies like this just crazy ass action <laughs> yeah there was a i never saw that third one i saw the second one i didn't even know um, there was a third one apparently there was there you go my whole thing is like how did they never get steven seagal in one of those things how the hell did that never happened because they were about guns and he was about kicking and he got real fat Whatever, John claude Van Damme was about kicking. Yeah. And he was in the second one. <laughs> he although, he actually, although he <laughs> straight up like kicked a knife into a dude's chest. That was a... <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. It was, it was not Thor. It was Thor's brother. Oh, the other Hemsworth. <laughs> the other Hemsworth. Yeah, he guy like, kicked a knife into the other Hemsworth's chest. What is his name? Is it Luke? Luke Liam? Hemsworth? Liam Hemsworth? I think like it's Liam. I don't, man, I don't know. Not it's like the Thor, bald that guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there's Alec yeah, but, and then there's, uh, which one's Billy? <laughs> there's there, a... Yeah, there's Alec and, the, and I know Adam Baldwin. The only reason I know Adam Baldwin. Oh, Serenity. Is he, so, yeah, he, yeah, exactly. Firefly, Serenity. And then he's also in Predator 2. He was like one of the douchey guys that worked with Gary Busey. <laughs> I don't so there you remember go. that. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's in Predator 2. He doesn't have a big role, but like you got Gary Busey who's just, full-fledged Gary Busey in that movie and then you have like he had this like his sidekick his like chief dude Adam Baldwin was his chief dude whatever I don't know what that was. <laughs> his lieutenant his I don't chief know, dude whatever. his chief dude whatever the, whatever the hell that means um so I okay I wanted to get into something I I, I, I had to ask you about this and, and and I'm gonna preface this by saying this like when we first started this show, to any of you guys listening, we promised we'd talk about some goofy stuff and, 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 and maybe some you know, news articles, do some movies, video games, whatever. We would have fun here. And, and I also promised we wouldn't get into any politics. And, and we're not going to. But, but this is loosely connected to politics. But, it, but I, I'm telling you it's worth it because it, it's the most insane. Did you hear this story about this kid that tried to – that tried to – make a false allegation against uh, the FBI agent who's investigating Trump. Did you hear about that? No. Okay, so there's this 20-year-old kid, and he comes up with this idea that he wants to put a stop to the, the Robert Mueller who's investigating Donald Trump for the Russia thing, and he wants to discredit him. So he, he puts out, like, uh, he, he has this website that he creates and we start hearing that there's going to be an allegation. He starts tweeting out, there's going to be an allegation. This woman uh, says that he sexually assaulted her, all this other stuff. Well, he got caught. And the way he got caught, Google search. He, <laughs> a couple of random women like called in and were, like, and were basically claiming that they had been offered money to make false claims. So they gave some information. They Googled the website of the firm that this kid uh, – 
was was working with the, uh, a firm that, by the way, that the, the it was called Surefire Intelligence, and the kid said he had nothing to do with it, and and you know it wasn't his website, and he didn't know anything about anything. The website had like pictures of celebrities as part of their staff, like Christoph Waltz from <laughs> Inglorious <laughs> Bastards was like listed on like as one of like the dudes that worked there. I'm like, oh, Christoph Waltz, really? That's the guy that works there. Well, what an interesting client that was. He, there was a phone number that like that was his mom's phone number that was on the website, and all the, and then the the domain was attached to his Gmail address. Like it took them a Google search. To find out that this kid was full of crap, right? And and not only that, but then he goes he goes and carries on with the plan after people have already debunked it beforehand, and makes a public accusation against an FBI official, and uh, it was glorious. And, and the person who they said they had a rock star witness that was going to tell her story, she didn't even show up to the press conference. <laughs> it was just, it was the most incredible piece of flame out. Uh, I, 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 it was it was crazy. It, it was one of the more jackassery, uh, you know, best examples of jackassery that I have seen in the last like decade. And I thought it was hysterical. And I, I, I wanted to share that with you because this kid is stupid. If 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 you're trying to come up with a well orchestrated, compli- complex plan to take somebody down, it should take more than a Google search for your plan to go into the dumps. <laughs> It's just, just my opinion. Yeah, especially if you want to take on the FBI. I mean, that's that's kind of their job. Yeah, he's an idiot. Yeah, he's just dumbass of the year. Yeah. So anyway, I, I wanted to share that because I wanted to get out. Like, I wanted to get that out because I think it's a it, it, it's one of the most insane stories I've ever heard that uh, a guy could be that much of a dumbass. You can go to jail, right, for that, can't you? Right. If if, if you publicly accuse of FBI agent of misconduct and you totally set it up <laughs> that's, that's, right like that's it. you probably go to jail for that right uh i don't know if there's not a law they could at least make your life hell i imagine <laughs> do some nasty yeah. things to your internet capabilities and so forth yeah this is pretty it was pretty bad i i thought it was pretty funny uh, that that is as close to politics as we'll ever get, guys. Like I'm not, I'm not we're gonna, we don't, we don't do that here. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a hell of a thing. Did you ever turn around and go see Tusk? No. Oh, did you need to see that? We gotta talk about that one. That's it's it's a movie based on a podcast. You and I do a podcast. Trust me on this one. See what Kevin Smith was talking about. See what Kevin Smith was talking about? This is Kevin Smith. Didn't I, we had this talk about Tusk, right? Didn't I tell you about that? Yeah, but what he talked yeah, about? It's a, it's, a, it's a Kevin Smith movie. He, he wanted to make this bizarre ass movie. Just you'll see what he was talking about. Just just go and go and watch this damn movie and see how bizarre it is. It's, it's on Netflix. Trust me on this. Go watch it. We had to talk about that on this show. We have to. It's too good. <laughs> I, I I I I can't guarantee you'll like it. I can guarantee you won't forget it. Yeah, that's kind of how memory works. Yeah. Well, no, there's a bunch of movies that we've seen that I've damn near forgotten. You and I saw, like, actually, I think one of them was called The Forgotten. We, we, <laughs> we, we have seen some shit. the one with Julianne Moore? That's the one where, like, there's aliens sucking people into space with, like, a vacuum cleaner or something. <laughs> and, and, that, and that plot twist just kind of comes out of left field. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it was going to be good. Then people were just. And they're gone. I yeah, there's, there were a lot of movies I've seen that have just been dog shit. We have seen some really rough ones. Um, but oh, I did finish that Behind the Mask. I, the last show I mentioned that it was a that Behind the Mask. It was like a, it was the one that was uh, kind of like District Nine, but for horror films. Uh, finished it, loved it. See that shit, dude. Trust me, that's really good. Is that more that's Netflix? A, uh, that was on Amazon Prime. Um, yeah, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. That that's a it, it's a very short movie. It's like an hour and a half long, but that's like again District Nine for horror films. It's a dark comedy, and it's really good. And then like it starts as a dark comedy and ends up turning into a pretty decent horror slasher film. So, huh. 
check it out, man. That's a good one. That, that honestly, for me, for creativity alone, puts it in my top ten horror movies of all time. Just for on basis of creativity. Fair enough. What did you see? Um. Well, <laughs> me and the wife were out <laughs> at a restaurant last night for happy hour. And uh, since we have the AMC pass, we're like, well, might as well use it. And uh, the only thing showing near the time we were at the restaurant was the Nutcracker in the Four Realms. The Nutcracker? That thing came out already? Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. Well, how was the Nutcracker? Uh, I I would rather just crack my nuts. Oh, God. That good, huh? Yeah. I, mean, I don't even know what that story is about. I really don't even. Don't I really. Don't I don't know the. <laughs> don't bother. If it wasn't already charged for monthly charges, I would have never ever seen that movie. And I was all I just, happy and full of sushi and alcohol. So it, I mean, <laughs> that still was bad. <laughs> Dude, you can't go wrong with sushi, man. I love. I love some sushi in a movie, but I. I, I didn't even. I, honestly, I don't know what the story of the Nutcracker is anyway like like never mind this movie i don't know what the i know that it was a musical everything else is up for discussion i have no idea it's yeah. got good actors in it which is actually interesting i like the remember uh murphy from an interstellar or murph, murph. oh oh murph yeah yeah, 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 yeah she's yeah. the main actress in this one and she's a good little actress but um isn't that jessica chastain right is that who that is well that's who she grew up to be well, no, but that's the actress that's in this movie, right? No, the young version. Oh, the young one. Okay. No, well, I, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I would have said yeah. Jessica Chastain. <laughs> that's why I was wondering why you didn't say that. I was thinking, why not just say it? All right, whatever. Miscommunication. No, there was good communication. You just, uh... Yeah, I guess it's just back. Look, the point is, she, the little girl was in the movie... And she, she's a good little actress. I think she's got a career, which will be nice. Um, but it's predictable. Oh, Helen Mirren's in it, too, but she's only in it for, like, two minutes. Helen Mirren, wow. Okay. <laughs> Breaking out that obscure reference. Helen Mirren, wow. What is the last thing she's been in? Red. I read two. I think they made two of those. Oh, that's right. Those were movies that came out. I actually liked Red. I did too. I like John Malkovich in it. It's really, it's it's just his face. I don't know. <laughs> he acted John through Malkovich. his face. <laughs> John Malkovich does a lot of stuff, like man. He, I mean, he he made he, he makes Con Air work because it sure as hell ain't Nicolas Cage. Yeah, that movie's entertaining too. It's not good, but it's entertaining. Oh yeah, I agree. You know another movie is not good, but I just love it, and I will my personal top twenty. And it's not a good movie. Face Off. It's not even a good movie, and I love it. Personal top 20, bar none. Just to watch Nicolas Cage and John Travolta compete for who can overact the most. It's yeah. just glorious. <laughs> I like John Travolta being psychotic. He always does that good. Yeah, and I like watching just Nicolas Cage. <laughs> He's in full cage mode, man, at the beginning of that movie. <laughs> he is just he is off his damn rocker. That's a good one. I really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed the hell out of that one. Um, no, man, I, 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 think, I think we're in for a fun, uh, for a fun Sunday, and um, you know, I can't wait to, to, to see some of these games. And I'm hoping that I can uh, jump ahead of you in the standings here, but I'm not feeling real confident after picking the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, the only Jeez. reason I picked the Niners is because they always lose, but they always compete. Raiders do not. Yeah, I, again, but, but here's the thing. If you had known, because my, my assumption is you didn't know Nick Mullins was starting. I don't think anyone knew Nick Mullins. I don't think Nick Mullins knew he was starting. If you had known that a, that a third-string quarterback who was undrafted was making his first NFL start on a short week, you'd have probably been like, Raiders going to whoop that ass. <laughs> but most people, I, that's what I thought. And no. Well, <laughs> to my advantage, I tend to not pay attention to one in seven teams. So yeah. I was yeah. That game was on Fox, man. That game was on national television. I'm thinking, wow. Yeah, Thursday That's, night football has actually been worse. Prime time this year altogether, man. Jesus, it's bad. There have been 
Well, you know, there have been some good ones, though. I mean, like that. I mean, but yeah, primetime is has has had a has definitely had a rough go of it. But you know, Chicago and Green Bay opening day wasn't, um, you know, wasn't terribly bad. That's all I got. That's all I got. Well, Vikings and Saints was all right. Vikings played like crap, which made the game the wrong kind of interesting. I thought Vikings and Eagles was better than that one. And I thought, well, oh, like, yeah, oh the Chiefs-Patriots was fantastic. Oh, yeah, that one. That was fantastic. Um, I mean, we've had, I mean, Packers and Rams last week was really good. But, you know, we're, we're getting into some good ones, though. I mean, like I said, we got, we got you know, Green Bay and um, – Green Bay and uh, New England tomorrow, you know, or, or or tonight, I guess, is the show will come out before the before the game start, and then um, Dallas Philly next week, you know, Kansas City and the Rams on um, Monday Night Football week after that. So, no, you know, we're, we're starting to get. Up, man. <laughs> you, I was gonna say, well, well, we're gonna get two two of the next three weeks. We're, we're in for some really good ones. Um, because I don't think that there's two games that I wanted to watch more going into the season than Packers, Patriots, and Rams, Chiefs. I mean, right now those are probably the two best games that you know that I could see on the slate, and I can't wait for both of them. They're coming up, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But um, yeah, then that'll do it for us. Unless there's anything else you wanted to add. Um. A little side note, I think. I hope okay. people now this season appreciate the little factors of football, such as, you know, field goal kickers and offensive lines and whatnot, because it has never, ever been more obvious than this season how important those three points and offensive lines are to the game. Like, I don't think people got that until this year. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely – kickers have had a rough year. Um you know, you know, this season, you know, a lot of different kickers at a lot of different points, but you thought the offensive lines and yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, you've mentioned it with Minnesota, how it's impacted them. You know, the Eagles offensive line hasn't been the same and look at what's changed there. Um, or, you know, even on the Texans and, you know, the Texans offensive line basically is a the reason they start 0-3. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think definitely, it's, it's definitely, uh, something that you're seeing a lot of and, and you really understand also i think more never this year you're really seeing a lot of average teams and how much better they are because of aaron Rodgers, like uh, and tom brady and um you know even the carson wentz is the world you know right like you know pat mahomes like if you if you if, if you look at some of the teams that are out there like especially the packers and the patriots if, if you took if you change qu- quarterbacks those rosters they're nothing they're really nothing. Yeah, and, and it's very obvious this year how much, how many average teams there are, but how these great players, singularly great players, are elevating them. And I'm not saying that that's a new thing. Rodgers and Brady have been dealing with that for a long time, but you're really, really seeing right now, you know, how different things are. I mean, I mean, I mean look at what the Chiefs have been since Andy Reid's been there. Look at what they are now. Yeah, they got that quarterback. Got the one guy. You know, look at Carolina. Carolina is the most pedestrian football team I, you know, I can see in the league, but they've got Cam Newton. <laughs> yeah, rushing for 80 with a couple touchdowns. That's what I'm saying, man. It's, it's crazy how good some of these teams are uh, because, of, because of one or two guys. <laughs> and for a lot of them, it's only one guy. It's gonna be fun to it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be a fun finish, man. I'm with you on that. But enjoy the games of football, guys. It's gonna be a fun weekend. He's goods. I'm Danny. We're out. Yep.